Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. In 2014, I reviewed a Fumetti comic called Nova Girls, A Kissing Canvas. As a reminder, a Fumetti comic is essentially a photo comic, taking stills or photographs and using those instead of just artwork. It's just as legitimate a form of making comics as drawing everything, but of course, like any method of making sequential art, there are good examples and bad examples. Nova Girls is a bad example. Many commenters were surprised to learn that there was more than one Nova Girls comic. Which also goes to show why it's important to watch the post credit stingers on episodes. Yes, there are in fact three Total Nova Girls comics. Kissing Canvas was the second. And before you ask, no! Reading the first one does not explain what the hell these things were trying to promote. In it, the so-called Nova Girls show up at a space station to confront Canvas, some kind of intergalactic producer, to express their irritation about some movie using their likenesses, Space 342434, and how it portrays them as money-grubbing morons. They then proceed to be money-grubbing morons for the rest of the comic, with very little to distinguish any of them from each other, not helped by the addition of two other groups of whatever the hell this was promoting, named the Corporate Raiders and the Killer Secretaries. This somehow results in a massive brawl where they eventually break the fourth wall, and as the guy who sits atop said fourth wall, that's especially irritating, and defeat the evil Canvas. There was also wrestling, a bunch of backstory that we are not privy to, and lots and lots and lots of unfunny jokes, resulting in a line that I am still still baffled by to this day, reactivate 18-hour bra. Well, obviously this is all my fault. I would have understood Kissing Canvas more if I had just read the first comic of this little series. So let's dig into Nova Girls, Space 342434, and finally get some answers! Settle in, people. This one's gonna be rough. cover, shockingly enough, is better than Kissing Canvas's cover. It is still not good, but it is better. It features the Nova girls all just kind of standing or kneeling in a square with a picture of space behind them while holding futuristic guns, and they all have a pink outline on them. Too much pink energy is dangerous. The exciting corporate adventures of the Nova girls. Watch them synergize the hell out of some spreadsheets. We open on a two-page spread of two of the Nova Girls walking in a corridor and shining a flashlight on something we can't see. One woman, Rial, contacts Personnel Director Dobra, aka the lawyer lady from Kissing Canvas, and informs her that they've found something. Don't forget to tell her that it's really disgusting and I get time and a half whenever I encounter really disgusting things. And yet I don't get any extra pay for doing this. As indicated by the borders on the spread, this is supposed to be a film strip. In particular, the film strip we kind of saw in Kissing Canvas, meaning that even in-universe this thing was considered trashy garbage. Also, it's in black and white. The benefit of that is that it integrates the photo stuff better with the stuff that's just drawn in. The downside is that this is really reminding me of Bimbo's in Time, so I guess this episode gets to be a follow-up to that one, too. More of the Nova girls arrive, naturally all of them wearing the most logical of commando gear, spandex leotards. So what is it that they've located? A dead body. It's already dead? I can't kill something that's already dead. There is logic in what he says. 
Dobra commands them to search the area for survivors. Then again, something must have dried this guy up. Maybe we'll get lucky and it's still around. Unlike this poor dope, I'm wearing my warrior workout gear. I'm invincible! Communicating with the strike team is the Nova Girl's CEO, Lyra, who's in a control room speaking with Hollow Hank 500, shown in the sequel comic to be a goofy cartoon face, whereas here he's just a different sort of goofy cartoon face, taking the form of a stereotypical 50s looking guy. Securities exchanger Rupia is acting in a ritually aggressive manner. Query, could it be too much caffeine? <laughs> There are still another 58 pages to go. What do you have for me, Personnel Director Dobra? Time is money in our pockets, you know. True enough, this comic was donated to me, and yet I still feel like I wasted my money with how much time I'm spending on it. The scout party finds the control room of the derelict ship they're on, and the place has been wrecked. It's been put through a ringer, but there's nothing here. Dead, alive, or even like my last date, somewhere in between. A sweet guy for a zombie, though. Brought me flowers from his grave. Two others snap onto the idea of a date with someone neither dead nor living. We should be so lucky. Let's take them any way we can. Haven't had a date in months. I mean, if you want someone alive or dead, there's a guy in my supply room you could probably take off my hands. No time! Still working on the DVD! Hope to have it out in October! He hopes to have it out in October. And you're blaming the job? What should I blame? Glandular over-endowment. I read it turns guys off. Hashtag feminist. Even Lyra and Hollowhank find this discussion asinine and decide to just file their report on the situation. Eh, <sighs> what the fots? This comic can go fots itself. Nova Incorporated, Client File Report, 14C7A. Hired by Shatner Leisureways to locate and retrieve the property of passengers of Andorian Cruise Flight number 2453, reported missing three standard weeks ago. We have found the ship crash-landed on a planet orbiting Derek 4. We suspect that more Star Trek references will be shoehorned into the dialogue soon. Everyone on board the ship is dead, so Lyra thinks they'll have quite the lawsuit on their hands. Luckily, Shatner Leisureways is contractually obligated to pay us before any of their assets are frozen in litigation. Unfortunately, since I apparently don't know how to spell leisure despite doing it right on the last page, I won't be able to legally claim our money. So why was this page a two-page spread? Well, clearly it was to show off the exceptionally beautiful shot of this planet. And the child's scribblings that are this spaceship that crashed on it. You know, one of the advantages of comic books versus any other medium is that there's no budget to worry about in regards to special effects. Whatever you can conceive of in your imagination, you can put it on the page. This artist, though? It had to be someone of limited imagination. Lyra says that they're bringing the reconnaissance team back and are leaving a tracking device on the ship in case the company wants to retrieve it for salvage. Like spitting into a nuclear meltdown, if you ask me, but sometimes relatives want to have the bodies for burials and silly things like that. What's sad is that I can totally believe that she's a CEO now. Although cremation is much more cost efficient, if you ask. Well, if that's how you feel, I mean, a lot of people have pointed out that I haven't physically burned a comic in a while. The scout team tells her to turn on some kind of biofield that'll protect them from the atmosphere, though she groans that they should all just get a special surgery to let them breathe a methane environment. Rapira, the overly aggressive one from before, says she'd be happy to if their medical benefits actually covered it. And you know how tight her purse strings are. Well, considering she hasn't had a date in weeks, I'd say almost as tight. Don't be gross, Haler. Hashtag super feminist. When one of them mentions how the planet they're on could be worthwhile to claim considering the amount of minerals it has, actually she says it's chock full of vitamins and minerals, but if I talk about every single stupid line of dialogue in this book, it'd be as long as the 500th episode. A voice calls out to them. Presumptuous! INTEGUMENTED GROUND-CRAWLING BIPED WENCHES! Ah, one of the rejected titles for sultry teenage super foxes. Whatever it is declares that nobody's gonna strip mine them, and the ground starts rumbling. Is that your stomach growling or mine? Oh no no, that was me growling. And you should get used to that noise, there is a lot of comic to go through. The group soon realizes what's going on. Can't kill an earthquake. At least I don't think I can. I mean... I've never tried to shoot an earthquake before. Lyra asks Hollowhank what's up, 
and Hank has suddenly transformed into a picture of a celebrity. I'm sure I'm supposed to recognize them, but my brain has already started to fry after only 10 pages of this thing. He says that there's obviously some kind of life form on this planet that they didn't detect before. As an earthquake starts to hit the scouting team, we're once again reminded of how awful Fumetti comics can be as we see one of the Nova girls falling backwards in this awkwardly framed pose. Or maybe she's just hoping that she'll escape this crap in the gutter area of the comic page. That lady, named Haler, is a bit traumatized by the rock that put her in that terrible pose. My head was inches from being smushed into tapioca. Considering the story so far, I don't think you would notice a difference. If my head were turned into tapioca, a 100 credit style and body wave would have gone down the tubes. I rest my case. What would my boyfriend say if my head were crushed? How would that affect my insurance premiums? Shut up and stop proving my point! Lightning bolts start striking the ground as they flee, two of the women getting hit and freezing in place in mid-special effect. Rupia, pissed at all this, decides to open fire at the sky. They both owed me money! No stinking fluff balls are gonna screw me out of buddies who owe me money! Does... Does she not know what clouds are? The remaining two drag her away as Lyra laments the deaths of the two. I mean, they could be dead. I have no idea what those lightning strikes did to them. Currency coordinator Haler and systems analyst Rial both dead. This is terrible. They both had full dependent pension plans. Why do I even have employees? They're just a drain on money. Pissed off about the paperwork she'll have to do over this, Lyra approves of Hollow Hank going out to combat the whatever the hell it is that's doing this. Also, now he's Rambo, because shut up. The three continue their escape. Haler, report! Wait, I thought Haler was one of the ones who was killed. I think it's very nice of you to give that dead woman another chance. Also, I looked at the back cover, which has pictures of all the Nova girls. That does not look like Haler. Maybe it looks like Kopeck, but honestly, it looks more like Pamela Anderson. And since Hollow Hank zips in now, transformed into a still of Tom Cruise and Top Gun, it would not surprise me if it was just another celebrity still. Between this, Cinnamon Number 11, Bimbos in Time, and Holy Terror, what the hell is it with terrible black and white indie comics and random cameos from celebrities and fictional characters? So apparently the ship we saw in that two-page spread wasn't the derelict, but the craft the Nova Girls arrived in. My mistake, but why the hell was that your establishing shot? Anyway, Hollow Hank gets the three into the ship, while using a still of... I think Steve Martin? If I get any of these wrong, I just want you to know, I don't care. I really do not care. It pushes Haler onto the ship in a rather inappropriate manner. Hank pinched me! Hey, Hollow Hank, where do you get off copping a feel? Hashtag super duper feminist. The ship takes off and manages to clear orbit despite all the lightning strikes, but the ship takes a lot of damage, particularly navigation, power, and weapons. Look on the bright side. We still have plumbing. Considering all the crap I'm seeing in this, I think you're being a bit optimistic. The damage to the ship causes it to crash land in another two-page spread. Oh good, this one has even less details than the last one. I was afraid they'd stop being incredibly lazy for a minute. But hey, at least we've got scintillating dialogue to keep us invested in the story. Oopa oopa! You know guys, it's not too late to cancel the review. We can just call this week a wash and skip to next week. It's another issue of Batman Odyssey, eh? Eh? I'm Mashugana. You're crazy? That's what that word means. Lyra asks for a science report. It's a big planet with a few moons and a neato double star. What are they called again? Binaries, you idiot. The woman who proclaimed Oopa Oopa a minute ago is calling someone else an idiot. Care to add some more pearls of wisdom? Yeah, there's a lot of big pointy things which could be subliminal phallic symbols if viewed by social deviants or Geraldo fans. This isn't funny! The planet is rich in minerals, but what they need is water for their coolant systems. Lyra thinks they should find some natives and see if they can help, but Dobra's got bad news. There's also a comet approaching the planet that will no doubt destroy everything once it hits. Even the comic realizes how ridiculous it is that they just happen to land on a planet where that's going to happen, but they just brush it off as Lyra tells everyone her plan. We need water, right? And a comet's nothing more than a big ball of ice, right? 
We get some help from the natives, we destroy the comet, the fallout will get this planet drowning in water, we'll get enough for our coolant system, and they'll be so happy that we restored their eco-balance that they'll give us exclusive mining rights to the planet. You know, that's probably the dumbest thing anybody said to me around here in a long time. And so they initiate the plan, with the Nova girls heading out in a shuttle to try to contact the natives, and Hollow Hank now transforming into Ed Grimley. This comic hates me, I must say. Hank asks how they're gonna stop the comet. That's the easy part, Hank. The tough part is convincing the natives to allow us to rape and pillage their planet. I keep glaring at it, but the comic won't shut up! The aliens on the planet apparently have cannons that open fire on their ship, which frankly looks a lot more detailed than the rest of their vessel, so I guess the artist finally woke up. They try to evade, but eventually get blasted by the alien weapons, Dobra complaining to Lyra about her stupid plan. How did I get stuck with such a bunch of whiny employees? And Hollow Hank transforms into- OH GOD NO! Can I not even escape seeing him in my own frickin' show? I do this to make people happy, damn it! With the shuttle on fire, the other Nova girls plan to jump out with jetpacks, Lyra saying she'll let them go and try to save the ship. It's a noble gesture, but Dobra points out she's only doing it because the shuttle isn't insured. Also, I don't think those jetpacks are gonna work, ladies. Considering they're drawn on, it's more likely this is gonna turn into a Looney Tunes sketch where it's full of camping supplies. And so the ship crashes, but it remains mostly intact. Unfortunately for her, the aliens start approaching as indicated by this caption box. These are the creepy aliens dramatically approaching the shuttle. Thank you, political cartoonist, for helpfully pointing that out! Apparently the twist with the jetpacks is that they were actually parachutes. I mean, was that supposed to be a joke? That they expected jetpacks and got parachutes instead? Dear lord, we're only halfway through this thing! Kopek and Rupia get zapped by the aliens while Dobra collapses from her, uh, arm wound. Lyra has fallen unconscious and is being examined by the aliens, Hollow Hank now appearing as Uhura while translating their language. Although, oddly enough, it's a still from Star Trek The Motion Picture. Was that just more readily available for them to take the still frame from? The aliens, which look like jellyfish with towels hanging under them, speak to each other about the health of Hollow Hank and Lyra. Two diverse species, perhaps, Dr. Baloon. Think not, Dr. Kndom. Looking better is this one, doctors. Indeed, orderly juice bag. Tentacles off her, please. I'd say they were making a tentacle hentai joke, but clearly the joke is supposed to be their names. Supposed to be. Poor Lyra is about to be wrapped up by refugees from a condiments tray. Ah yes, the most common condiments. Jellyfish, balloons, condoms, and juice bags. Though if you really want to spice up your food, you add an inflatable beach ball. Of course, since she hasn't been portrayed as a sympathetic character throughout the story, you don't really care much. Comic, you vastly underestimate the amount of things in this that I don't care about. Let's turn to the other fan-fave characters. This is the first comic, and I have no idea what the hell the Nova Girls are supposed to be! And considering the depths of information most people are able to dig out on the internet about obscure stuff, you'd think SOMEBODY would have been able to tell me who they are, but I'm really beginning to think that the Nova Girls were just invented for this thing! Dobro wakes up, being tended to by another of the aliens. Hey, I knew I wasn't having a wet dream. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! Hold on, let me turn on my Deus Ex Machina Universal Translator here. Hope the batteries are fresh. They weren't! The batteries exploded, she never talked to the alien, everybody died, the end. Please! The alien identifies itself as Hefty Wimpy, an outcast from their society because it's a pacifist sissy. The two talk about how the Nova Girls got there and how the comet is gonna hit their planet soon. Hefty Wimpy agrees to help, and they shake tentacle in hand. Too touching? Too sentimental? Too pathetic? Too idiotic? Too badly integrated? Too who seriously thought this was a good idea? Rupia and Kopek are being held inside some kind of orbs. Talk about having us by the balls. I'll let that dumb joke pass because, let's face it, if they didn't say it, I would have. That one better get by the editor. I won't let that one pass, though. Up yours. 
Oh, it's okay that we're sitting here like sexist specimens, but I can't make one off-color crack without fear of reprisals? What the hell is sexist about this situation? What the hell are you even trying to do, comic? Seriously, don't they look sort of like a family to you? Like a family of floating potato chip bags. Could you two please just shut the hell up? They don't. They just keep yammering for another page. And while they do that, I'm gonna point out something that doesn't really matter, but is just weird. For some reason, the page numbers of the comics keep changing their font. No, seriously, every page has a different font for the page number. What's the point? Is it supposed to be a joke? Did the editor just forget what they used for each page number and kept switching it? Hollow Hank and Lyra are brought to some kind of examination room where Hollow Hank takes on the form of the Sean Connery James Bond because Lyra is restrained to the table. Even I'm too tired to get excited about this setup. Frankly, this has more to do with Psy Spy than James Bond. As such, allow me to repeat my thesis from those reviews. The future is dumb. Lyra wakes up and is shocked by the appearance of the aliens. You, my friend, are horribly drawn! Oh, bite me. The aliens are actually pretty decent designs, frankly. Not too imaginative, but they're consistent and look better than your ship. After some more dumb jokes, back over to Dobra, who has been brought by Hefty Wimpy to a waterfall. She's not sure how to collect enough water to bring back to the ship. Hefty Wimpy suggests filling him up and bouncing him back like a ball which is only slightly less stupid than Lyra's plan for this planet. Try you must. It is the sign of a true hero, and that surely you are. Do or do not, Lumpy. There is no try. I don't know if I'd be quoting Yoda right now. He also said that failure was the best teacher, yet the creators on this book didn't stop after the first one. The two are then confronted by three more of the aliens that yell, Yeehaw! Beverly Hillbaggies they be. Be we cooked meat, most assuredly. But are we in the southern portion of the galaxy now? Dobra tries to talk to them, but they just want to shoot and eat her. Hefty Wimpy, however, gets in the way of their gun and dies in her arms. While she gets pissed off and no doubt plans to rip them apart, we see Rupia and Kopek escape from their own bubble prisons. Hate to burst your bubbles, baggies, but you're trashed baggies now. Get it? Get it? Oh, I get it. You're terrible. I'd rather not. The joke or shot from behind? Getting shot from behind would be a relief right about now. Preach into the choir, sister. They just keep running despite not knowing where they're going. Hey, this story's so full of plot holes, I figured a couple more wouldn't have hurt. You shut up. They come across a chasm. Well, what do we do now, Einstein? I dated a guy named Einstein once, but it didn't work out. Was he a brainiac? No, it was all relative. Who oh, would you shut up? They jump into the chasm to evade their pursuers and land relatively unscathed. And it didn't stop the jellyfish! This really stings! I can't believe you don't shut up! In a bit that would actually be funny if this thing weren't so atrocious, they take a sound effect word, stretch it out, then snap it back to take down the two aliens pursuing them. After another fourth wall breaking joke, it's back over to the operating room, where Lyra finally has Hank shoot the aliens when they suggest taking off her clothes. Once freed, Lyra checks on Hank. Hank, you look awful. Have you taken a look at everything else that was drawn in this book? You know, being self-aware that you're bad doesn't make you less bad just means that you don't care that you're bad. She leaves Hank behind in a bit that is supposed to be funny, it is not, and fights off several of the aliens for a while until she finally escapes their building, right into a horde of more aliens with weapons aimed at her. Maybe I got a little ahead of myself. You know, I was hoping to get a little ahead. You don't even have... Ugh. Move on, just move on. Fortunately for her, Dobra arrives in the ship to rescue her. I presume there are weapons that we can't see aimed at the aliens since they let her go. Dobra also picked up the others and they proceed with their plan. Well, we have about seven pages left to divert the comet's path, save the planet, and get filthy stinking rich. What does that translate to in real time? Marvel time or DC time? Last week I reviewed a book where a semi-truck gained consciousness for no reason, and I still think you're in no position to be mocking Marvel or DC comic. Anyway, they shoot the comet. Hooray, I guess. It's Miller time! I'd make a joke about Frank Miller not making things worse, but... Honestly, I'm really excited about the prospect of booze. The aliens thank them for their rescue, 
and the director yells cut. Yeah, as indicated at the beginning and the sequel, this whole thing was just a movie being filmed. Which makes all the self-referential stuff about this being a comic really friggin' confusing! And so our comic ends with the Nova Girls taking off their own heads, revealing that they were actually big-necked alien mantis things this whole time. And that'd be quite a shocking twist and makes sense why they act like complete morons, if not for the fact that I already read the Kissing Canvas comic, which reveals that they act pretty much exactly like this anyway. And since I have been so quiet about my opinions concerning this book, it might be a shock to you when I say that this comic sucks! Wow, guys! Just wow! There are a few positives I will give. Occasionally, OCCASIONALLY, there is a funny joke in this thing. It's not often, but it does happen. And as I said earlier, it being in black and white helps integrate things so much better than when it was in color for Kissing Canvas, since the lighting of the photographed people doesn't contrast so much with the colors of the drawn bits. It's not good, but it's better. The writing is ridiculous, especially in how it has two different stories jammed together with no resolution for the first part. In fact, the entire idea of that slaughtered crew and the planet going haywire affects nothing in the story other than an excuse as to why they landed on the jellyfish planet. Hell, that half feels much more disjointed anyway, because that's where it really ramps up the fourth wall breaking moments that get annoying very, very quickly. And the worst part is that there is still one more of these Nova Girl comics. But don't expect me to be talking about that one anytime soon. I don't hate myself enough to do that for a while. Next time, as I spoiled earlier, it's back to Batman Odyssey. It's up in the air whether or not it'll be better or worse than this thing. with this one? And if it was supposed to be a joke, go to hell.